100 dice. Ruby on Rails 7 is out. Code along on a guided journey through the Rails 7 Getting Started Guide and beyond with test-driven development. There has never been a better time to learn Ruby on Rails. Hit the ground running with the newest version. Go to statelesscode.com slash getting started with Rails 7 to level up. Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is video number eight in our series, nerddice.com, where we build a Ruby on Rails application for tabletop role-playing. And we have just finished our retrospective after our initial setup and configuration. And this is a good time. We're about to start embark on a, um, a set of uh, features like an Epic where we go in and uh, set up user authentication. And kind of between these two things is a good time to just look at the overall ecosystem of uh, Ruby and Rails and any of your important dependencies and see if anything has happened since you've kind of been working on your last set of features. And as a matter of fact, Ruby on Rails has released a new patch version here, 7.0.4. And so in this video, before we start in the next video, going through and setting up Devise, we're going to go and uh, make this update to our app and make sure that nothing breaks. We don't really have much yet to break, but um, we're just going to kind of go through the process of how to do this. Um, and again, it will matter more once we've got something, say, in production. We've got to be far more careful about doing this. So, But we've got a pretty simple issue here update the bundle. We're currently running 7.0.3.1 and we need to upgrade to 7.0.4. So we'll get started on this. Uh, in our repository here, we are on the main branch, so we'll check out a new branch here. Got a need a dash B. Need to put it in the right place. There we go. Okay. So now we've got a new branch, and if we wanted to, we could just run the bundle update command here because of our uh, pessimistic versioning here uh, will allow for us to go from. 0.3 to 0.4. I'll just update this in the gem file itself. And then I'm still going to run bundle update. Uh, you can see here this this might be a potentially uh, breaking change. And before we go into production, we want to set uh, exact pessimistic constraints on all of these gems. In the stage we're at right now, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so we'll make sure that we, we'll throw, after we get this working, we'll throw something in the backlog to make sure that that gets done before we do a production release. So back in our command line, we can run bundle update, and we should see here now all of our Rails Dependencies are going from 7.0.3.1 to 7.0.4, and our bundle is updated. And we can see that our gem file.lock has changed. And figure out what other things have changed here. So our database gem has upgraded a few other kind of dependencies of uh, the gems in our gem file are upgraded here. So we're going to rerun RuboCop. Because that looks like one of the items that was updated. So we'll just, I have a an item to update these. So we'll just leave the 
the warnings as they are right now. There weren't any new offenses detected. Um, make sure that we can still run these things. There aren't any tests running right now, but I think we're okay there. So those are the only two changes we've got. Um, and we will, we should be able to now uh, add them, do a commit here. I'll pause and write my message. All right, we've got our commit message here. We'll save it. Go back to our command line. Push to the origin. And while our build is running here in the background. I'm going to go in and add an item. Not upgrade. Set version constraints before releasing to production. So we'll have that there in our backlog. And we, um, so we don't forget about that when the time comes. So take a look at our actions here. We're still waiting for this to complete. I'll pause and let that complete. All right, so our build has completed successfully. We've got our issue added to the backlog and now we can go in and create a pull request. And instead of doing the rebase and merge here from GitHub, we're just going to do it remotely here. So we merge the feature branch into main and then we push to main, which merges the pull request and we go in and close the issue and we can see our issue is moved to done here. Hopefully our action um, will pass. I'll uh, just kind of assume that that will work. We'll talk about a little bit what we're going to do next. So now we're going to go into our um, our epic next on uh, user authentication. And we've got this kind of set up into a bunch of subtasks. If, if you look at the, uh, the GitHub issue we created here. Each of those kind of smaller cards are set up as subtasks here. So that's how we've got it going. Um, you want to do that. Um, you can see, I guess here I would edit. Um, you can see that you just kind of use a uh, bracket space br closing bracket in order to do that. Um, we'll cancel the, the edit on that, but that gives us what we want. Check back in on our build and we are successful. So we'll end there and pick up with Devise in the next video. Want to create your own Ruby gem but don't know where to start? Code along with me on the end-to-end -end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. 
Go to statelesscode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.